Hey everyone, welcome. I am Mr. Bo, and in today's video, we have a lot of brand new information about the future of Destiny 2. So, Bungie has gone ahead and released a brand new Vidoc called The Road Ahead, which gives us a glimpse at what we can expect going forward a whole year in Destiny. But along with that, they have also given us a brand new calendar and a better look at what is coming in the next month or so in Destiny 2's Black Armory DLC. So on screen you'll be seeing gameplay that I've taken from the brand new Vidoc showing off brand new gameplay of the new activity The Forge as well as showing you off some brand new armor, weapons and even a glimpse at the brand new raid. So let's go ahead and firstly take a look at the brand new gameplay calendar which includes content for all three seasons and it is split up into two sections. Firstly we have the free seasonal updates and then we also have the annual pass content which you'll only be able to access if you have bought the annual pass. So from December till February we have a season of the forge. This includes the dawning, a power increase of 50 which will only be available to those who already own Forsaken. We then have brand new vanity rewards, new triumphs and lore books, new rank rewards, crimson days and then the return of iron banner. If you own the annual pass you will then gain access to the black armory weapons and gear, a brand new exotic quest in which players can earn the destiny one hand cannon the last word a brand new raid which takes place in the last city on earth, new triumphs and lore books, and then access to the brand new black armory forges which I'll get into in just a second. Moving on into the next season, the season of the drifter which will run from March till May, we have gambit private matches and new maps and another power increase of 50 taking us up to 700 and those two items will be only available to people who already own Forsaken. We then have new vanity rewards, another brand new exotic quest, new triumphs and lore books, new rank rewards, a brand new spring event which we haven't seen in Destiny before, and the return of Iron Banner. Then for annual pass owners you'll gain access to the Joker's Wild weapons and gear, another brand new exotic quest, a new gambit experience, new triumphs and lore books, brand new Xur bounties and Joker's Wild's weekly quests. And then the final season, Season of the Shadows, which runs from June till August, will get again another level increase of 50, taking us up to the total of 750, again only available for Forsaken owners. We then get another lot of brand new vanity rewards, another exotic quest, new triumphs and lore books, new rank rewards, the Solstice of Heroes making a return, and then again Iron Banner. Annual pass owners then gain access to new weapons and gear, two redacted activities, another brand new raid, new triumphs and lore books, and then finally a brand new six player match made activity. We don't know what that is, but I'm sure we'll learn more in the near future. So that is a lot of content coming over the next year for Destiny. This calendar basically shows that we'll have something to play all the time going forward. However, there does seem to be maybe a few gaps between some of this content, which we'll get into now. So we have a calendar for the Black Armory. So on December 4th, when the Black Armory launches, we will gain access to Volander's Forge. Now the Forge is a brand new horde mode activity, basically where you'll be creating these brand new weapons as part of the armory. So each forge will have a specific weapon. Now in the brand new Vidoc, they gave us a glimpse at three of these weapons. The first one being a sniper rifle, which is a brand new sniper rifle, which can shoot four shots. But if reloaded in the right way, it can then fire all four shots at once, basically allowing you to body hit enemies. We then have another weapon, which is a bow, and they describe it as being fairly similar to how Thorn worked in Destiny 1. And then we have a fusion rifle that actually goes on your hand and has the ability to track enemies. And again, these weapons will be found in these forge activities. Killing enemies drops parts which you then take to the forge in the map to craft your weapon. So on December 7th, we get the second of the forges, which is Gofanon's Forge. Also on December 7th, we get that brand new raid, which as I mentioned, takes place in the last city, an abandoned part of the last city. And from the trailer, it seems like we're going to be having a pretty big sparrow section, which is what I always like to see. And they describe it as being pretty close to Wrath of the Machine from Destiny 1, which I think was actually a lot of people's favorite raid. It was short, but the encounters were fun. They weren't overly challenging, but they had enough mechanics to them that every time you did it you actually had fun and you could try different ways of doing it so hopefully this brand new raid is a lot of fun it's definitely in a cool location 
On December 11th, we see the return of the Dawning, which is going to be free to all players. And in the Vidoc, we actually get a glimpse at an old Destiny 1 vendor returning in the form of Eva Levante. As to what she's doing, we don't know, but it's nice to see that they are bringing back some vendors from Destiny 1. Then on December 18th, we get Izanami's Forge. And on January 8th, we get Neobis Labs, which I'm not sure if that is another forge or if it's something different. We'll have to wait and see. Then at the end of the month on January 29th, we get the brand new exotic quest, the draw in which players will be able to earn the last word. Now fingers crossed this isn't an exotic quest like the Thunderlord exotic quest in which you did a five minute step only to find out you then had to wait a week in order to do the next step. Hopefully they've learned from that and this is a quest that you can just do straight away and you don't have to wait for a weekly reset. And then finally, moving ahead a few days to February 5th, we have the Crimson Days event making a return again free to all players. Fingers crossed they have switched this up a bit because I think Crimson Days has been a pretty poor event in the past. It really hasn't found its mark, so hopefully they've made some adjustments and it's a lot of fun this time. So there you have it. That is the calendar for the yearly release as well as the Black Armory. I will leave a link in the description below to the full Vidoc so you can go and watch it for yourself. But we do get to see some pretty cool stuff in it, like brand new armor and weapons from the Black Armory. Again, glimpses at the brand new raid and this brand new forge activity. We even get to see some of the cutscenes with the brand new vendor in the Black Armory. So there you have it. Let me know what you guys think of this brand new information. What do you think of some of the footage shown off in this Vidoc? Does it get you excited for the future of Destiny? I can't wait to see how this actually plays out. Hopefully this is a better structure to what we've seen in Destiny 1 and even Destiny 2 with Curse of Osiris and then Warmind. I think the season I'm most looking forward to is obviously Season of the Shadows with two red acted activities, a brand new six player activity and then obviously a brand new raid. We also have in the Season of the Drifter the brand new user bounties but nowhere on this calendar do we see the return of trials of the nine does that mean that it's going to be abandoned or are they going to try and bring it back in some way i'm not too sure i would like to see it return it's obviously a fan favorite game mode a lot of people liked it a lot of people liked it more in destiny one as trials of osiris than they did as trials of the nine but hopefully they can tweak it and bring it back hopefully by the end of the year so again, let me know what you guys think of all this brand new content, which season gets you most excited, and is there anything in this trailer that caught your eye? Let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, or if it's helped you out in any way, feel free to give the like button a big old hug. You can subscribe for more gaming content and coverage, and if you do, feel free to also boop that bell icon so you're notified when my future videos go live. But apart from that, thanks for hanging out, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.